this has been our room that we've been staying in. I was telling my friend Ben about this the other day. It's a very cool room because it's got all these books. But sleeping in this bed with my feet that hit just about the end here. I'm always a little nervous. I'm going to extend too far. Kick one of these bookshelves. I feel like that would be the end of you, boy. Got my notes here. Hey yo, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, beautiful people of the internet. As you guys are sitting here on this Sunday, I'm gonna keep this real chill. Just gonna be a little conversation today, talking nice and relaxed in this nice relaxed setting this Sunday morning to bring you guys hopefully a little bit of an answer to should you redo or should you not. Now, what I am looking to do here is hopefully help you make a decision around the last week of the open based on your goals. And that's the first point. What were your goals? When you're deciding if you should redo this workout or not, I think you need to ask yourself, did you meet your goal. And now this goal can be anything. It can be like mine, which was to qualify for quarterfinals. It could be to be the fittest at your affiliate and win that leaderboard. It could be to beat your best friend. I don't care what your goal is. I'm not here to try to say what a good goal is, what a bad goal is, whatever. If you had any goal of any sort and you did not achieve it, and you think redoing 22.3 could help you achieve it, then I 100% say redo. My total advice would be to redo. Just like last week, I had 22.2 that I did not want to redo and I didn't think I could do much better, but I knew that it would give me a cushion going into this week. It would help secure my spot in the quarterfinals, which was my goal. So I redid it. We're going to talk about this week in a moment for me, but for you, that should be the question right now. To start this whole thing off, do you have a goal that you could achieve potentially by redoing it? And if you don't redo it, will you guarantee that you won't achieve that goal? And if that's the case, again, go for it. I think people, I really hate when coaches and other people in the sport discourage athletes from redoing the workouts because it's just the open and you're just a regular person. Like I'm a regular person, but I'm still going to put in this work. I'm still going to try my hardest to get there because I'm competitive and I want to achieve that. And that shouldn't take away from my goal. Just like you shouldn't let anyone or anything take away from yours. Even if it is just to beat your friend or be the fittest in your group or your custom leaderboard or your affiliate, whatever it is, don't let people go discourage you from this. This is once a year you get to compete on a stage like this at the CrossFit Games Open. This is the first stage of worldwide competition alongside some of the fittest athletes on earth. It's super cool. It's super cool to be able to get to do these workouts, to compete, to submit your scores. This is really your only chance to do it on this biggest scale. So go for it. It's one more workout. Who cares if it messes you up for a couple days and you can't just go train at your fit? Take a couple days off. It doesn't matter. Don't let someone discourage you from redoing this workout if you think it's going to help you achieve your goal, whatever that goal might be. So who shouldn't redo it on the other side of this coin? Who shouldn't redo this workout? My advice would be if your goal is met and your goal was to qualify for quarterfinals, then you probably shouldn't redo it. If your goal was to be the fittest in your affiliate and to beat your friends and you think you can get a better score, go for it because you have nothing coming up after this likely. You can take an extra week off. You can do whatever you need to do to recover from this workout and from the open, you're good. But if your goal was to qualify for quarterfinals and you are in a qualifying position with your first attempt score, like I am, no matter how bad you want to redo it, you probably should hold off. And that brings me to me. I am not redoing the workout this week. I know I made the video last week being like, eh, I don't think I'm going to redo it. And I redid it the next day. I'm telling you right now, the only thing would be if somehow right now I'm 1800th in North America, and I think you only have to come top 7,900. So unless I slide, what would that math be? 6,000 spots in the next one, less than 24 hours, next 23 hours, I am not going to be redoing this workout because my goal was to qualify for quarterfinals and I have achieved that. I achieved that with my first score. Now, do I think I could do better? Yes, and I'm gonna get into why in a second when I give you advice if you are redoing on how to redo and get a better score, but I do definitely think I could get a better score. I do definitely think I could do better. I do definitely think I could do significantly better. Like we saw in the first two weeks where I improved by over a round in the first workout and over 30 reps in the second workout. I do think I could do a lot better, but my goal was to get to quarterfinals. That's why I redid the workouts the last two weeks was to ensure I was putting myself in a position to do that. And I have done that. And my score was good enough to get me there and likely to secure my spot, my first attempt from this week. So I'm not gonna redo it. And the biggest reasoning is just, well, number one, if you're anything like me, I'm still sore for my first attempt. I think I would be fine to redo it tomorrow, Monday, if I wanted to. But the more, the point is more so that I want to be able to start doing GHDs and doing rope climbs and doing heavy barbell movements over the next two weeks to prepare myself and get touches on those things heading into quarterfinals. Now, obviously I've prepped and I'm not gonna get much fitter in the next two weeks, but it's more about being able to get touches on those things and to practice semi quarterfinal simulation type workouts. And 
we have a limited amount of time to do that. There's basically five training days this week and maybe three the next week, depending how much you want to taper before quarterfinals start. So with that in mind, I do not want to eliminate training days for quarterfinals by redoing this workout. So that would be my advice to you. If you have qualified for quarterfinals and that was your goal, you're in blank slate it resets it doesn't matter where your position is going into quarterfinals as much as i'm telling you to go try to beat your friend if that is your ultimate goal if you've qualified for quarterfinals and that's your ultimate goal but you're upset that you didn't beat your friend don't redo it it's not worth it you don't need to do that it's a blank slate moving in everyone's going to forget about it it's fine go into quarterfinals and put your all into that if you don't compare if you don't care about it at all then sure go ahead and redo but for most of us who want to put our best foot forward in quarterfinals i would suggest then you do not redo. Okay, now, for those of you who are going to be redoing this workout, my tips to get a better score. Number one, learn from your last attempt. There is a lot that can be learned in every open workout when you redo, but especially from this last one. There are really kind of key cutoff points, I think, in this workout where you could see, was it your gymnastics? Was it your heart rate? Was it your thrusters? Was it this, was it that? Learn from your mistakes in your last workout. I think, go off what I learned from this workout, which was, this one, and I heard Michelle Latonda talk about this, that's another reason why this is kind of my main point here. This workout, you cannot escape from. I paced the first attempt trying to escape the pain of the round of 15s. I thought that if I broke my thrusters up quite a lot and would try to move smoothly through transitions and chalk my hands and all this, that I would get to that last bar and I would have a lot of energy and I'd be able to do the thrusters and I'd be fine. That was not the case. And the more I talked to people who didn't have that approach and just kind of sprinted their way through, they didn't have a dissimilar experience to me at any point in the workout. The workout's going to suck no matter what. It's thrusters, it's pull-ups, it's franish. It's going to hurt. You can't escape that. I do think there obviously are some of you who probably went out way too hot if you're a little bit newer to CrossFit maybe and you're not used to pacing. That's a different story. Obviously, if you went out too hot and you know at one point you just blew up, then you have to go into this one with pacing. But again, trying to tie into, I think, more experienced CrossFitters, a lot of you guys who have probably done this workout and maybe felt something similar to me, which was that blow up at the end and everything else kind of just being relatively smooth sailing to get there, you you have to know that that pain level is coming. <laughs> The, the, the intention in this workout is not just to save yourself for the end. It definitely is just to be ready to embrace that suck. So if I was to redo this workout again, which really is all the advice I can give is what I would do differently. I would attack this workout a slight bit more. Now I wouldn't come out and sprint, but I don't think I would be as, as timid moving through the 95 pound bar and the 115 pound bar, specific for me, because obviously the thrusters were the thing that slowed me down the most. I think that no matter what, I would have been able to keep the same sets in the gymnastics. The double unders are obviously active recovery for, for the vast majority of people. If you can do double unders, it's such a small amount. It really does come down to that thruster or the bar muscle, up, depending which one you're better or worse at. But for me, being the thruster, 135 is 135. I'm not escaping how heavy a 135 pound barbell is. It's 135. And that's always a hard thruster for me. And yes, your common, common knowledge might be like, well, if you go slower, you're gonna have more energy. But I'm telling you guys, I got to the 135 pound bar at the seven minute and 15 second mark. And I finished the workout in nine minutes and 24 seconds. It took me over two minutes to do 15 thrusters. That's insane. That's like what? four thrusters or three thrusters every 30 seconds. Like you, I can definitely do 15 thrusters at 135 better than that. And I think a lot of what happened in that workout was I was just so much, so much worried, so much trying to overpace, get there, whatever, that I just took too long to get there. And I left myself that two minute window to do it, which, you know, maybe I could go faster in that. Maybe I couldn't. But the reality of this workout is that the suck is gonna catch up to you no matter what. So for me personally, moving forward in this workout, if I was to have redone it, it would have been maybe to push a little bit more at the beginning to eliminate some of those unnecessary rests, know that the pain is coming and just be ready to sit in it. If you are redoing this workout, if you're making the decision to do it based off everything we already talked about, this is, this is it. You have to sell out. This is your chance to achieve your goal or to not, or just to potentially get a better score than what you had and what you think you can do. So go for it. This is a go for it kind of workout. Yes, again, those of you who absolutely just blew up and know where you need to pace, this video isn't quite for you. You understand. You're probably like, yes, I just went way too fast. Oh, I shouldn't have done the pull-ups on broken. I'm going to break those up. Great. But for a lot of us, I really think this workout was a trap, especially mentally, not thinking or thinking that you could escape the pain when you can't. So knowing that, knowing that that pain is coming, go for it go for it. You're not going to sprint, but you're going to go into it aggressively. You're going to attack the things you know you can attack and you're going to expect that pain. And when it gets there, realize it's the last workout of the open, realize it's the last week of the open, bite down hard and try to work to achieve your goal in this workout. Yeah, that's it. That's my advice for 22.3. If you should redo or not, I hope this video helps some of you guys out a little chill one. We'll be back to a more normal vlog later this week where I break down all of my quarterfinal training and we start that quarterfinal prep. 
two weeks from now, throwing down some of the fittest people on earth. I'm excited. I'm a little nervous. I'm going to take you guys along for the ride. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for tuning in. See you in the next one.